Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and heard the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 27th of March. AAP launches campaign against arrest of Delhi CM Arvind Kejriwal. Indian troops save six presumed dead in Baltimore Motors collapse. And Pashtun activists blame the attack on Chinese engineers on Park Army crossings. And now for all the details. Leaders of the Aam Army Party and its supporters launched a campaign on Wednesday against the arrest of Delhi Chief Minister and AAP National Convener Arvind Kejriwal in an excise policy linked money laundering case. They marched near the Delhi Legislative Assembly wearing yellow t-shirts and burnt effigies in solidarity with Kejriwal and chanted slogans against Prime Minister Narendra Modi's BJP. Later, they also barged in the middle of the assembly session to demand Kejriwal's release. This came as the Delhi High Court earlier in the day warned lawyers against protesting in court premises over the key opposition leader's arrest. और विरोध करते हैं भारतीय जनता पार्टी की तानाशाही का जिस तरीके से चुनावों के दौरान हमारे लोगों के ऊपर छापे डाले जा रहे हैं हमारे चार शीर्ष नेता जेल के अंदर बंद हैं The horrific collapse of 2.75 kilometer long bridge in Baltimore in the United States on Tuesday which sent cars and people plunging into the river below has sent shock waves around the world Reports have suggested that all the 22 crew members were Indian and they are safe Maryland governor has called the Indian crew heroes for their prompt warning before the collision because of which many lives were saved. However, six workers were missing and are presumed dead. Locals recall the moment of collapse and said the noise was felt in their houses. They further said their thoughts are with the families of the victims. I like woke up and I heard the noise and I it was like vibrating the house and stuff and it only happened for like five seconds and I was really like scared I literally was like covering my ears like oh my god I'm gonna die I'm gonna die my prayers and thoughts are definitely with the families I can't imagine what they're going through that was my first thought as soon as I heard about the collapse this morning was how many people were on the bridge so I can't imagine what they're dealing with right now um, I know it's gonna rock the community and while condemning the terror attack which killed five Chinese engineers in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, a Pashtun activist has blamed the incident on proxies of Pakistan army in the region. A report. An activist of the Pashtun Tahafuz movement, Fazal ur Rahman Afridi, has blamed the terror attack on five Chinese engineers in Pakistan's Khyber Pakhtunkhwa on proxies of Pakistan army and the terrorists trained in the Pakistani training camps. He said that Pakistan is double gaming China as they did with the United States and claimed there is a link between the Moscow terror attack and repeated attacks on the Chinese in Pakistan. And we also informed the world uh, about the terrorist training camp in different areas of Pakistan, particularly in Khyber Agency and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, where terrorists are trained uh, to um, uh, attack um, uh, different communities in Pakistan, particularly the Pashtuns and Baloch. Uh, why these areas are bleeding and other areas of Pakistan like Punjab are safe, uh, it's clear to the world. So we think uh, that uh, uh, the, uh, the whole world, not only Pakistan, uh, you know, uh, is in danger. Uh, these terrorist attacks uh, will happen. Uh, I think there seems to be a link between Moscow terrorist attack and this Pakistani attack and more uh, seems to be in the pipelines. It will not stop until or unless Pakistan is made uh, accountable. The Chinese authorities have demanded Islamabad to speed up probe and ensure severe punishment for the perpetrators. Chinese engineers have been working on a number of projects in Pakistan, with Beijing investing over $65 billion in infrastructure works as part of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. Meanwhile, Kashmiri activist Taslima Akhtar has busted the malicious propaganda on Kashmir by Pakistan and compared the rapid development in Jammu and Kashmir with that of POK, showing mirror to Islamabad.
Taslima Akhtar, an activist from India's Jammu and Kashmir who recently attended the UNHRC session in Geneva, busted the malicious propaganda on Kashmir and showed mirror to Pakistan. She exposed the agents of Pakistan who masquerade as residents of Kashmir and the United Nations. She also praised the move to abrogate Article 370 and the transformation the Union territory has witnessed since August 2019, in contrast to Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, where people are reeling under wheat crisis and zero development. टूरिज्म के हवाले से बड़ी-बड़ी इंडस्ट्रीज अब हमारे इंडियन कश्मीर में आ रहे और उसके हवाले से हमारे माशरे हमारे कश्मीर की यूथ के बेरोजगारी खत्म है हमारा कश्मीर बहुत आगे अब जा रहा है हमें उस पर फोकस है हमारे इंडियन कश्मीर में कितने बड़े-बड़े हाईवेज बन रहे रोड बन रहे ट्रेन स्टेशंस बन रहे और उनके देखो पीओजे के में क्या है वहां पर पब्लिक डोनेट करके अपने रोड बना रहे हैं ये हालत है पीओजे की की वो तरस रहे खाने की निवाले के लिए वो तरस रहे हॉस्पिटैलिटी के लिए उनको रावलपिंडी जाना पड़ता कराची जाना पड़ता है जब उनको टेस्टिस करने पड़ते फुल लिक्विड प्रोफाइल उनको करना पड़ता उसके लिए उनको हमारे देखो 2812 हॉस्पिटल्स है हमारे जम्मू एंड कश्मीर में वो सपने में भी कंपेयर खुद को इस कश्मीर के साथ नहीं कर सकते इंडियन कश्मीर के साथ Taliban spokesman Zabihullah Mujahid said that stoning is part of Sharia law and the world should not misinterpret it. He further said that if the conditions for it arise again, they will undoubtedly implement the Sharia decrees. Whether it is prayer or stoning, Taliban will carry it out. Since seizing power in August, Taliban has imposed its strict interpretation of Islamic laws and does not allow women to go outside without a male companion and girls are not even allowed to study after sixth grade. No country has formally recognized the Taliban's regime in Afghanistan over this issue. Moving on, India's Border Security Force and the Border Guard Bangladesh held a joint beating retreat ceremony at the integrated check post in Palbury Town to commemorate 53rd Independence Day of Bangladesh on Tuesday. Senior paramilitary officials from both sides exchanged sweets as a massive crowd gathered to witness the event. Bangladesh, formerly East Pakistan, was liberated from Pakistan after a nine-month war of independence with the help of Indian military forces. Uh, they have sacrificed their life, Indian nationals, for our freedom. So uh, our heads up to them and we are really grateful. On March 26, 1971, Pakistan launched military attacks against Bangladeshi civilians, students and armed personnel who collectively demanded separation from West Pakistan. The war continued for nine months and finally culminated in country's independence on December 16, 1971. India and Bangladesh have maintained close ties since then. And as part of a unique tradition, hundreds of male devotees dressed up as women and performed annual prayer rituals recently at Hindu goddess Bhagwati's temple in Kolam in India's Kerala state. The men clad in saris decked up with heavy jewellery carried oil lamps and other prayer offerings to celebrate the festival at Kota Kulangara temple. According to local belief, the festival began with a group of coward boys who dressed up as girls during their playtime and made offerings to a stone. One day, Goddess Bhagwati appeared from a stone and hence the unique tradition came into being. That time there was no woman. So these small kids used to dress up as women and they used to worship the Goddess Bhagwati. So one day Goddess Bhagwati directly came and she gave the blessing that once in a year, uh, men should dress as women across us and worship me. I'll be very happy. So this is how this ancient uh, year tradition from Kerala year started and everyone started. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.